Hello, my name is John Burns with Siemens, and today I'd like to introduce to you the functional aspect of the Simicode Pro motor management system. Again, Simicode is primarily an overload, solid state overload relay protection system for full voltage motor applications, and it comprises of several uh, individual components. On the demo here, here is the base unit, which is the central CPU brains of the, of the system. And to do the overload protection, the Simicode needs to be able to measure motor current. In this case, we're doing it with a separate CT that also has the capability of measuring voltage. So I'm measuring current and voltage to be able to get power and power factor off of this system as well. The system also has an optional um, digital expansion card, so I can light a couple of extra lights on these push buttons on the system. And it also offers uh, a optional operator panel system, a graphical operator, to do both control and diagnostic uh, display of the system as well. So again, from an operational standpoint, Simicode has on board some local I.O. Uh, connections so that I can bring in local push buttons for local control directly to this box and also outputs to not only light the lights but also to turn on the control contactors and as you can see here I'm using some IEC rated contactors but uh, with Simicode it works just as well with NEMA rated contactors basically I have a dry uh, relay contact uh, up to a 6 amp uh, contact that's available off this system for these contactors so a NEMA contactor would work just fine so when I start up the system an output from the Simicode goes to the coil of the contactors to start the motor running In addition to the uh, control function or the, the I.O. function of the Simicode from a protection standpoint, Simicode also offers a tremendous amount of monitoring capability. So not only will it protect the motor, but you can now measure and monitor a lot of different conditions for the system. Using the current and voltage monitor, or measuring module again, I can be measuring motor current, so separate from the overload functionality, say if normally my motor is running at 8 amps, and uh, something changes in the dynamics of the system and now is running at nine or nine and a half amps, internal to Simicode, I can set different values for a monitoring capability to now enunciate either a warning or say a shutdown condition based on that change in that dynamics. And not only can I do that for say measuring current, but I can do monitoring against current, voltage, operating hours, number of starts, a lot of different uh, dynamic systems or, or variables in the system can all be uh, associated with a monitoring function. Also, the response to the conditions can also be changed with Simicode. With a traditional overload, as it gets to an overload condition, the typical response is for the motor to shut off. With some systems, that is the only response that's available. With Simicode, not only can I detect the condition, such as an overload uh, fault, but now Simicode can also be modified so that the response of that condition is not necessarily to shut off the machine right away. There may be other uh, uh, control functions. You want to close a valve or do other uh, f uh, functions prior to the actual motor shutting off. So now Simicode can detect the overload condition, allow the machine to now do other conditions, or Simicode can actually initiate those other uh, responses and then shut the machine off. Uh, with the overload functionality. In addition to uh, that error uh, for overloads, Simicode also will uh, look at different profiles or typical motor applications. So with the configuration software, for instance, I can drop in a profile that this Simicode is uh, going to act as an overload relay. With that profile, one of the three outputs for the Simicode will turn on and be used as a traditional fault contact, just like with any other communicating overload relay. But the rest of the inputs and outputs are still available uh, to act as more or less remote I.O. with the system. But internally to the Simicode, there's also some PLC functionality with uh, some very simple uh, logic capability using truth tables, timers, counters, uh, signal conditioners, things like that. I can still customize some of those signals within the Simicode. So for instance, a signal that comes in that's active high, I can put it in through a signal conditioner, invert that signal, so now it's active low. Rather than making, say, a change up at the automation system level, Simicode can adjust itself locally. Another profile that Simicode will also uh, have available for you is a profile for a direct starter. 
And what that does is now all the control uh, functions as far as starting and stopping the motor will run through the Simicode system. So if I have a local push button, I'll wire that push button directly to the Simicode rather than a parallel start-stop traditional circuit. And the start function over the network will come into the Simicode. Say for instance if you equate this say to starting your car. If you turn your key in your ignition of your car, that doesn't send voltage directly to your starter. That sends a signal to your computer in your car to start it. Um, you also may have an uh, electronic key fob as an alternative way of starting your car. So two different ways to request the start of your car, both going into your computer system, and then the computer decides, should I listen to that command signal or not, and then send the signal down to the starter to actually start. It's the same principle for Simico. I can have a start command coming from a local push button wired directly into the box. I can have a start command coming down the network cable going into the box. Simicode will then decide, such as am I in local or remote mode, do I want to listen to that signal, then go through a series of run permissives to say, is everything else in line to actually want to start that car or start this motor? And once everything is satisfied, Simicode will send the output to the contactor to actually run the motor. In addition to that, Simicode also goes through some startup checks for you to have a proper, did you have a proper starting of the contactor or the motor. Uh, typically with a starter, that feedback that you had a proper starting would be to wire to an auxiliary contact of the contactors. That's not very accurate sometimes if you've lost your three-phase supply to your starter. That contactor will still pull in, but your motor's not spinning. What Simicode does as part of this profile is it marries the go signal with is current actually flowing through the CT. So when I have a proper starting sequence, Simicode has looked at the output to start, has seen the motor current flowing, so he said we had a good start. However, say if my three-phase power was interrupted and I now try and start this system, Simicode didn't get the feedback that the current started up in time. So now we'll flag that as a fault but as a specific fault that it didn't start properly. In addition to that capability, say if we were in a run condition, and now the three-phase uh, system goes away. Now basically the motor had an unexpected stop. Simicode didn't get a command to stop, yet the motor current stopped flowing. Sig uh, Simicode will also flag that as a different individual fault for the situation as well again aiding in the uh, recovery time to better diagnose and give the maintenance people more information as to why the system just shut off and how to get it back up running uh, quicker. Another uh, scenario that is very common in the industrial market too is say as you're running the system and now you have a welded contactor and I try and stop that system I now have a runaway motor Simicode will also flag that as an individual fault and with one of the outputs of the Simicode, if you had a shunt trip on your upstream breaker, Simicode could also recover from that runaway motor condition as well, all separate without the PLC system being involved. Another function that Simicode can have uh, in addition to this, and this demo case uh, comes pre-programmed with a configuration that should kind of showcase some of this. Oh, turn the power back on. So as I'm running, and I'm building up so much current, these knobs will uh, be able to adjust what is my voltage that I can be monitoring with my software. This middle knob is to uh, adjust motor current. Right now I've got it turned up, so I'm going to be uh, instituting an overload condition here. Simicode can also monitor a, a built-in thermistor. A little bit more popular in Europe, but uh, with the demo case I can also inst uh, simulate uh, problems with the thermistor fault. So here I've generated an overload condition. So on the Simicode, I'll have a flashing light that that condition just occurred. And on the optional operator panel, I'll also have that flashing light. So to um, enunciate the, uh, the fault, if I come in, I can press either this local blue reset button here, or I could set it up on my HMI so that the operator could acknowledge that fault. The red light then goes to solid, and right now I'm in the cool down time for that overload condition. So whatever has been set for that motor uh, protection, you're now unable to start that motor again until that cool down time is completed. 
Cinecode has a function called emergency start, and I've actually programmed that functionality to be used. If I press and hold this red stop button for a few seconds, what it does is emergency start will erase the thermal memory of your motor system. And once it uh, is re erased, the red lights will go back away, and now I'm able to run my system again. So if you did have a motor application where you absolutely had to have that motor running, you could erase basically your thermal memory and get that system back up and running very, very quickly. In addition to that, Simicode also has a function called TPF, or test position feedback. And what I refer to that as more or less a dry run condition, where I had the opportunity before where I wanted to start and, and have a proper starting of the system where turning on the contactor and motor current flowing was a good condition. In dry run mode or TPF mode, it's more or less the opposite. When I close that contactor, Simicode doesn't want to see motor current flowing because it thinks it should be in a dry run condition. So on this demo case to initiate TPF, I can press and release the top operator button and the flashing of the stop light indicates that I'm in this TPF mode or dry run mode now. So if I go and I disconnect the three phase power and I want to test now maybe the logic of my Simicode, I can come over here and go into a start condition and now without motor current flowing it doesn't fault out and I can test all my internal logics of the system. However, say if I am in that test mode and somebody comes by and says, hey, that circuit breaker shouldn't be off, that should be on, and they turn it back on, as soon as motor current starts to flow, Simicode will see that as a fault and shut the system off and again have a separate fault condition that said, hey, we we're in dry run mode and all of a sudden I saw motor current. To come back out of the TPF mode, it's as simple as just press and release the operator button again, and now I'm back in the normal cycle. So again, from the system standpoint, it has a lot of capability, but it, the, the biggest strength of it is it can really morph into a, a, what I call a chameleon to what your actual situation is. If you've got an application for just an overload relay and you want better monitoring capability and things like that, and you don't want to change how your initial uh, your current wiring structure is. It's as simple as drop it in the overload relay uh, profile for Simicode and still take advantage of all the monitoring and control capability that it has on board. If you want to have a little bit more control functionality, you can use one of the predefined profiles such as direct starter or reversing starter. And now by that and Simicode having full control of the starting and stopping of the system, you now be able to get a lot more statistical data such as number of operating hours, number of starts, starts per hour, things like that. Where in the, if in the case of the local control was more or less in parallel with the automation system, if the automation system goes away, there's no way to, to keep track of how many times that motor has been started locally. If all of the control functions with the profiles go through the SIMA code, all of that statistical data is then be able to uh, not only uh, calculate it, but actually maintained on the Simicode box and then uploaded to the uh, automation system uh, for later analysis. So in conclusion with the Simicode system, uh, it's really um, value to the customer base is really again, its primary is overload protection, but as I stated earlier, it really is more for process protection or for the customer's environment. Because of its capability of its monitoring capability, its fault diagnostics, whether you get a fault and now you want to recover from that fault faster, reducing that uh, unplanned downtime, or get an early warning sign so that now, hey, something dynamically has changed in your process and now you can change it earlier before your system has actually failed, that's where the strength of Simicode comes in. Uh, not only reducing, again, the planned or the unplanned downtime uh, with the system. Because of the different capability that it can detect a lot of conditions, such as an overload function, and then customize the response to that, it really morphs its way into your process to what's the best uh, result for your control of your machine. So it'll reduce your downtime, but it'll also be easy for your maintenance people to maintain the system. From the two-piece design, uh, there's a separate memory module that you can plug into the system so that it can, uh, consists of the complete configuration, including your network address. So from a maintenance uh, replacement aspect, 
you remove the uh, removable terminals, you don't have to mess with any of the three phase wiring because it's a separate, uh, separate uh, device. Bring in your new device, plug in your memory module, and the system is back up and running in minutes rather than 30 or 45 minutes of downtime for a typical uh, replacement system. So again, Simicode is a value that just kind of keeps on giving um, from your uptime and from your better diagnostics and uh, statistical data as to what's going on with your system. Uh, Simicode is a great uh, solution, not only for new applications, but also for retrofit applications as well. Uh, if you'd like to get more information, you can contact your local Siemens representative and they'd be happy to uh, give you some more information on it.